Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it is Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three recipes for you, breakfast, lunch, and a snack, dessert. They're all fall inspired. They're all really good. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every Monday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will have my recipe website. That is where you will find all of today's recipes, nutrition coaching for personalized macros and calories, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching. I've lost 140 pounds and maintained that weight loss for almost two years following my macros and calories, so I highly recommend this service, as well as links and discounts to my favorite things, and come join our free supportive Facebook group. We would love to have you. So let me turn you around and let's do some meal prep. For my breakfast this week, I'm making pumpkin scones. I have been eyeing the ones at Starbucks, so I'm going to make a healthier version. So let me show you what you'll need. You're going to need a powdered sugar or powdered sugar alternative of your choice, whole milk, light butter, all-purpose flour, brown sugar substitute of your choice. I have the Sucrin Gold. I just ordered another bag off of Nettrition. It's my favorite brown sugar substitute. I'll link Nettrition down below for you with a discount. Vanilla extract, pumpkin pie spice, baking powder, one egg, salt, and of course some pumpkin puree. So the first thing we're going to do for the scones is add two cups of all-purpose flour to a bowl, half of a cup of brown sugar substitute, two tablespoons of baking powder, pumpkin pie spice, and our salt. And then we're going to add the cold light butter and cut that in until we have a crumbly dough. And then in a small bowl, I'm adding my one egg, half of a cup of pumpkin puree, and then five tablespoons of whole milk. And then stir that to fully combine. And then we're adding our wet mixture in with our dry mixture and stirring again to fully mix. So I floured my surface. We're going to add our scone mixture. And then we want to spread that out into a circle. We're going to cut our scones into eight squares and then we're, or triangles, and then we're going to transfer those triangles to our parchment lined baking sheet. So once I transferred my scones to my baking dish, they became round scones, which is completely fine. I'm going to take a little bit of my whole milk and a pastry brush and just brush that right on top. I am going to glaze these. If you don't want to glaze them, I would sprinkle a little bit of granulated sugar on top, but I definitely want to make the powdered sugar glaze. And then our scones are going into a 400 degree oven for 12 to 15 minutes. So the pumpkin scones are out of the oven. These smell so good. I'm going to let these cool completely. Let's make up the glaze. We'll glaze them and then they'll be ready to go. So for the glaze, I added one cup of the powdered sugar sweetener to a bowl. We're going to add a tablespoon of soft butter, and a little bit of milk, and we're going to mix this until we have a glaze. You'll just add milk as needed. Here's what our glaze looks like. We will glaze the scones as soon as they're fully cooled. We are ready to glaze these scones. They are nice and cooled. So we're going to put our glaze right on top. And here's what the scones look like. These look absolutely incredible. I'm going to allow that glaze to, cool, uh, to harden and then we'll package these up for the week. I will go ahead and pop up here on the screen all of the points and macros for the pumpkin scones. For my lunch this week, I'm making sesame chicken meatballs. Now there's a couple of ingredients that I don't have. Mirin, the wine, I swore I had it and I don't, so I'm going to have to sub something in place of that. And then the recipe says you can add a red bell pepper. I'm not going to do that because I don't have one and I'm going to put these meatballs over some rice for the week. So let me show you what's in the meatballs. So I have a pound of extra lean ground chicken, soy sauce, honey, chicken broth, breadcrumbs, sesame oil, cornstarch, garlic powder, ginger. I'm using rice vinegar in place of mirin, plus I need vinegar for the sauce, green onions, and then I'll probably top it with some sesame seeds. 
So to make the meatballs, I added my pound of ground chicken to a bowl. I'm adding half of a cup of breadcrumb, ginger, and garlic powder, as well as some salt and pepper, two tablespoons of soy sauce, One tablespoon of the wine, I'm using rice wine vinegar, and then half of a tablespoon of sesame oil. Lastly, our chopped up green onions. I'm going to go in with my hands, like I always say, my least favorite part of making meatballs. Get everything mixed together really well. I did spray my skillet with some nonstick cooking spray. I'm going to roll these into the meatballs, add them into the skillet. It doesn't matter how many meatballs total you get. You just want to divide whatever you get by the number of servings in the recipe. And as always, all of my recipes are on my website. I'll link it at the top of the description box for you. So I have the meatballs in my skillet. We're going to allow these to brown completely. You do wanna stir them and flip them so they get browned on all sides. So while the meatballs are cooking, I'm going to prepare the sauce. So I'm going to add half of a cup of chicken broth, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one teaspoon of sesame oil, two tablespoons of honey, or you can use brown sugar, brown sugar substitute, one tablespoon of rice wine vinegar, and then half of a tablespoon of cornstarch, and then mix that all together. Once your meatballs are about 75% cooked through, we're going to add in our sauce. And we're going to allow that to simmer for a couple of minutes, then we'll pop the lid on and allow it to cook until those meatballs are cooked completely through. The meatballs are done. These smell so good. I'm so excited for these this week. Like I said, I'm just going to pair it with some rice and a vegetable. I will top it with a little bit of sesame seeds right before I have it for lunch. I'll put all the information here on the screen for you. For a dessert this week, for a sweet treat, I'm making apple crumble bars. I'm so excited for these. So let me show you what you'll need. So you'll need some sugar-free maple syrup. I am using Chalk Zero. I have allulose here. That is my sweetener of choice. It's all natural from figs and raisins. No cooling effect. I like it. I think it tastes just like regular sugar. I do buy it on Amazon. I'll link it for you. I'm using self-rising flour because I'm out of baking soda or I'm out of baking powder. And this has the leavening agents in it already. So I'm going to use self-rising light butter, milk of your choice, two to three apples. I have one more just in case these do not produce enough for the recipe. Salt, cinnamon, and some cornstarch. So to make the apple crumble bars, I'm adding my two cups of flour to a large bowl, one and a half teaspoons of cornstarch, a pinch of salt, two thirds of a cup of allulose, and then give that a quick stir just to combine those dry ingredients. And then I'm adding three quarters of a cup of light butter. And then basically just kind of cutting that into those dry ingredients. And we're adding in a couple tablespoons of milk just to get that dough consistency. So I have my eight by eight baking dish and a piece of parchment. I'm going to add about two thirds of my dough to my parchment lined baking dish. And then we're just going to press that into place in the bottom and that's going to form the crust of our bars. And I'm going to add my cut up apples to a bowl. I did only use the two. That was about two and a quarter cups, which the recipe called for. I'm going to add about two tablespoons of maple syrup and a tablespoon of cornstarch. And then we're just going to mix this together, get those apples coated in the syrup and the cornstarch. And then our apples are going right on top of our crust. And then just kind of spread those out nice and evenly. And then the rest of our dough is going to go right on top and then we're just going to press that out to create that top layer of crust. You can just kind of crumble that into place. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then I'm actually going to sprinkle just a teeny bit of cinnamon on top. And then our bars are going into a 350 degree oven for about 50 minutes. I just pulled the apple crumble bars out of the oven. They smell so good, I cannot wait to have these. I'm going to allow them to cool completely, pop them out of the pan, 
really easy with the parchment paper. Cut them into bars and I'll have all the information here on the screen for you. Thank you for joining me for this week's meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing all three recipes. Don't forget they are on my recipe website. I will put that at the top of the description box as well as nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And of course, come join our Facebook group. We would love to have you. Happy Monday. Here's to a successful week and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.